Okay, so this is going to be one of these videos where I probably don't reach many conclusions, leaves a few people unsatisfied, but I'm not going to jump to conclusions that I can't make. What I want to do is I want to discuss some statistics, interesting statistics given some of the conversations that have taken place recently regarding the fact that more men than women read Sam Harris's books, the fact that there's a greater level of religiosity amongst men than women in the United States. And the claim made, the somewhat absurd claim made as far as I'm concerned that it's probably due to the rampant misogyny within atheist movements that accounts for the fact that there are more atheist men than atheist women within uh, within the United States and probably within most Western societies. So what we've got here is we've got it, this is in the UK and it is a cohort study and if you're not sure of what a cohort study is, what a cohort study is, it's where you take a group of people that were all born in the same time period and follow them throughout their life. They are a cohort and you compare that specific same group of people as they get older rather than comparing people of the same age at different periods so people who are 30 years old at 1970 30 year olds at 1980 30 year olds at 1990 etc etc which means different group of people born in different decades so that's what a cohort study is and they have 9,000 people in this study that were born in 1970 and these questions were asked in 1972 uh, a little correction there, 2012, otherwise you'd be asking two-year-olds, which would be very helpful. And I'll give you a link because a guy called David Voas has just, uh, has just released some of this data from two years ago, looking at religiosity and especially looking at the differential in religiosity between men and women. <clears throat> and I think it makes very interesting reading. According to these statistics of these people, these 9,000 people in their 40s, 34% of women claim to be either atheist or agnostic, and this is using agnostic in the common sense of the word of just meaning not sure. 34% of women as opposed to 54% of men. So there is a substantially larger number of male atheists and agnostics in the United Kingdom. Uh, then there are female atheists, uh, 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 atheists and agnostics. Now you could then say, well, maybe this is due, Jim, to the rampant misogyny within atheist movements within the United Kingdom. Let me tell you, and I include myself in this, okay, that of, of the myriad, because I live in a society with a lot of atheists, and I know a lot of people who are atheists, and I know a lot of people who are agnostics. I don't know a single fucking person who is a member of an atheist organisation in real life, other than on the internet. I don't know a single fucking person who has ever been to an atheist convention, to an atheist meeting, other than people that I've met over the internet. So this isn't something people do in the UK. People's atheism, people's agnosticism has nothing to do whatsoever with atheist conventions to do with atheist societies. There really, really isn't that much of a need for it because it isn't stigmatised within the United Kingdom. So what is it due to? Why is there this differential? Well, I don't know the answer, but I suspect that it's more to do with a draw towards the spirituality. They didn't ask this in this survey, but had they asked about questions relating to attitudes towards astrology, towards whether, how, whether you've ever visited a medium in your life, uh, whether you've ever had a tarot reading, whether, you, whether you've ever had your fortune told, whether you've ever tried to communicate with the dead, whether you take those ideas seriously, I'd bet my ass that you would get, a, in each and every case, a hugely greater number of women who would give you positive responses to those things than you would do men. And I think that is more tied in. It's this draw to the spiritual. What they did ask in this survey is to do with life after death. Um, do you believe in life after death? And the statistics were that 60% of women believed in life after death and 35% of men believed in life after death. Now you might say with well, this just tallies in that's just because women are more religious than men so you haven't really demonstrated anything specific about those women who are atheists and those women who are agnostics but how about this? When they then broke the statistics down and said 
Um, right, we're just looking at the women who are atheists and agnostics in the survey, and they're just looking at men who are atheists and agnostics in the survey. This is what they found, that of those women who were atheists and agnostics, um, 36% said there is no life after death, whereas 63% of men said there were no life after death. So even even just looking at the people, even looking at the men and women who weren't religious, still more than half of the women who weren't religious, nearly two thirds of the women who weren't religious still believe in life after death, whereas only about a third of the men who weren't religious still believe in life after death. So I think that maybe tells us a little bit more than any claims that it's anything to do with sexism or any such bullshit like that. There is a fundamental difference, I think, in how men and women are perceiving these things, whether that's nature, whether that's nurture, whether that's the way that they're brought up differently, whether it's cultural expectations, I don't fucking know. But what I do know is there's a fundamental difference here, and I don't think it's to do with sexism. That's pretty much all that I wanted to say uh, with regard to that. The other thing that I wanted to talk about, they also broke it down by religion and looked at different religions and how those religions, how the level of certitude that religious people expressed that God definitely exists. And this gets us into the touchy subject, the touchy subject nowadays of Muslims. You know, there was a time when I started on YouTube, so that's not that long ago, only about six years ago, where, where it was fair game. You could criticise Muslims in just the same way that you would criticise Catholics or criticise any other religious group, whereas now it seems that if you do that, that it's racist. It's fine if you want to criticise Christians or Christianity in any way, shape or form. Fucking go at it, sunshine. That's absolutely fine. But if you want to criticise Muslims, it probably means you're racist. OK, but one of the problems I've always stated right from the word go with Islam, it's perhaps something that I kind of respect them for in a way, is that they take their religion fucking seriously. They don't piss about, right? When they say they believe in God, they fucking mean it. And that's something I respect them for, but it's also something that I fear about them because and I fear about any religious person who has that level of conviction because it seems to me that there's no getting through to a person that has that level of certitude but here are some statistics to actually back that up again this is the same cohort these 9,000 people all in their 40s and it asks those with a religion about what level of certitude they have and these are the percentage of people who said i have absolutely no doubt right of the believers i have no doubt that god exists they expressed no doubt whatsoever the lowest percentage was jews those jews that, that believe in god they're not just cultural jews they're believing jews only 11 percent of them was arrogant enough to say i cannot possibly be wrong god definitely exists when you looked at the Anglicans, they were they were uh, made into a group called Mainline, which I think is mainly going to be Anglicans, Methodists and Presbyterians, effectively. 16% of them displayed that I couldn't possibly be wrong. I have no doubt God exists line. Catholics were at 33%. Hindus and Sikhs, they were still down at 37%. Evangelical Christians, which included Baptists in this, 71%, and that's been one of the groups that I've always worried about, and Muslims, 88%. There are only 12% of Muslims that don't express absolute certitude that God exists. That is something that I find worrying, and that's nothing to do with the colour of anybody's skin or where they come from or any bullshit like that. It's just a level of certitude that concerns me because those groups that have a lower level of certitude, I think you've got a better chance of having a discussion with. You've got a better chance of generation upon generation of there being some change, of there being more acceptance of the way that the universe actually is and the chance of getting rid of the myths and the bullshit that goes along with it. Difficult to deal with that level of certitude. It's something that's always concerned me. 
I'll leave that at that. Um, I hope you found this video interesting. This is the first video I've actually recorded since my son was born. There's a little picture of my son there. Um, hopefully I'll get back to recording a few more videos uh, soon. I just wanted to get these statistics out there because I thought, especially given some of the cons conversations that we've had that were really rather interesting. Well, thank you for watching and uh, I'll be doing a little bit of a review on this monster uh, sometime in the near future. Bye for now.